Tonight, on History's Greatest Mysteries. He was an action hero, a cultural icon, a martial arts legend on the cusp of superstardom. I'm Lawrence Fishburne. On July 20th, 1973, Bruce Lee died tragically at the age of 32. The official cause of death, a fatal reaction to aspirin. On tonight's mystery, Bruce Lee's surviving brother has questions about what really happened. It was total shock. I mean, how could that be? I need answers about Bruce's death. Now, Robert Lee has enlisted a former Hong Kong police detective to launch an investigation into the truth. Do you think there was foul play? Good question. You know, I, I would sure like to find out. The mysterious death of a true action hero. Who or what killed the one, the only, Bruce Lee? On July 20th, 1973, Bruce Lee was in Hong Kong, awaiting the release of the movie he hoped would finally bring him the international fame he craved. Warner Brothers presents Enter the Dragon. Made with one of the biggest studios in Hollywood, he knew this film could make or break his career. Less than a month before the movie's release, Bruce Lee complains of a headache, takes a painkiller, goes for a nap, but never wakes up. His death leaves the whole of Hong Kong in shock. One day, he was alive and well, and he was being Bruce Lee, and he was on the verge of achieving everything he'd ever dreamed of. And the next, he just was gone. How could their hero have died so suddenly? With the help of Bruce's brother, Robert Lee, Chan has obtained documents which might contain the truth. In this envelope are Bruce Lee's death files, official documents from the court inquest into his death. These documents would include his autopsy report, toxicology report, statements from witnesses, police officers, and medical officers. The Hong Kong government has never publicly released these records. At his office, Chan scours the evidence. I'm looking for inconsistencies in that day's account, and for any decision which would be strange, dubious, and worthy of my further investigation. He creates a timeline of the day Bruce Lee died. On July 20th, 1973, Bruce arrives at the home of his alleged mistress, Betty Ting Pei, at 5 p.m., but he isn't alone. With him is Raymond Chow, Bruce Lee's business partner and producer on the film, Enter the Dragon. What I'm interested in is understanding what Betty Ting Pui, the actress, and Raymond Chow say happened in the apartment that night. According to both witnesses, the three sit down and discuss the script for Bruce's planned follow-up to Enter the Dragon, a film called Game of Death. At 7 p.m., he complains of a headache. Betty gives him a painkiller, which contains aspirin. Bruce goes to sleep, and Raymond heads off for dinner, leaving just Bruce and Betty in the apartment. At 9.30, Raymond calls to check on Bruce. Betty says she can't wake him up. Now, if you found somebody in your bed, unconscious and unresponsive, what's the first thing you do? You dial 999, call an ambulance. But that's not what happened. Raymond tells the police he rushed back to the apartment and rang for medical assistance, but not for an ambulance. He called his personal doctor about 20 times, and there was no answer. Then he called Betty's personal doctor. Ten minutes later, Dr. Eugene Chu arrives and finds Bruce is not breathing and there is no heartbeat. He tries CPR, but can't revive him. It's Dr. Chu who finally calls the ambulance. Bruce doesn't get to the hospital until 11 p.m., a full hour and a quarter after he is first found unconscious and unresponsive. Bruce Lee is officially declared dead at 11.30 p.m. 
when the public learns Bruce Lee died in Betty's apartment, she is seen as a prime suspect. The Bruce Lee, Betty Ting Pei scenario is like one of the classic locked room mysteries, which is that Bruce, Raymond, Betty are together at Betty's apartment. Raymond leaves. Betty and Bruce are alone in the apartment. Bruce dies. The thing is, Bruce is the one that ended up dead. Betty must be the one responsible, because there was nobody else there. Her lifestyle choices further fuel public suspicions. Betty Ting Pei ran with a fast crowd and was involved in the darker aspects of Hong Kong show business and the underworld. But she wasn't the only person in the apartment. Raymond Chow was also in her home on the night Bruce Lee died. Why was Raymond so slow in giving Bruce the medical help that he needed so desperately? Over the years, questions have been raised about his role in Bruce Lee's death. Raymond's persona as a shadowy figure, as a bad guy, as the untrustworthy um, element in the equation. It comes from a very obvious scenario, which was that it was show business, and Bruce handled the show, and Raymond handled the business. Raymond built up his company, Golden Harvest, from nothing to being a leading studio in Hong Kong's movie industry. But in doing so, he also built up a reputation for ruthlessness. Raymond Chow was known as the smiling face tiger because he would smile to your face and nod and agree to everything. And then he would rip you apart <laughs> when you turned your back to him. Raymond and Bruce had made three films before Enter the Dragon. All three had broken box office records in Hong Kong. But in the months before Bruce's death, the two were openly clashing over money. Bruce Lee was growing in frustration about what he perceived as being the inaccurate accounting and that, that he had not had the money back from his films that he should have done. He would just confront Raymond and say, OK, I'm seeing in the trades the movie's made this much money. Where's mine? In response, Bruce had started talking to other studios about making films without Raymond, leaving Golden Harvest in danger of losing its golden goose. Public suspicion has continued to swirl around Raymond Chow and Betty Ting Pei, but in 1973, both were cleared of any wrongdoing. Obviously, the authorities didn't think there was any suspicious circumstances and there was no foul play. But why did they come to that conclusion? Why, why did they rule that out? This official verdict is based on one big assumption. The fatal swelling of Bruce's brain was caused by the aspirin in the painkiller. But does the evidence back this up? Chan is on his way to the office of one of Hong Kong's foremost forensic pathologists, Dr. Philip Baer. Dr. Baer has spotted something unusual on the night that Bruce Lee died. Now, as far as the information I gather from all the documents you have, the ecogesic that Betty gave Bruce. It wasn't something that Bruce took regularly. Equagesic is the painkiller Bruce takes to combat a headache. It contains aspirin, but also another drug called meprobamate. Realistically, the discussion boils down to the aspirin and the meprobamate. In 1973, the official verdict was Bruce Lee was killed by the aspirin, but there is no scientific evidence that he reacted to this drug. Aspirin is so common now. Mm. You know, people take it for prevention of stroke, for prevention of heart attacks. So that leaves us with this, with meprobamate. Meprobamate is a tranquilizer which was very popular in the US during the 1950s. Under the name Milltown, it was prescribed to millions as a reliever of stress and anxiety. But in recent years, the drug has been banned in numerous countries because of its harmful side effects. There are reports of people having idiosyncratic reactions to meprobamate and it possibly causing death. These idiosyncratic reactions are hard to predict as they only happen in a handful of people. Dr. Baer thinks Bruce was one of the unlucky ones. Meprobamate caused this swelling of the brain uh, in Bruce Lee 
leading to him dying. So Bruce Lee was killed by an idiosyncratic reaction to one tablet. Yep, sadly. This is a brand new theory. Meprobamate has never before been put forward as Bruce Lee's killer. But the emergence of new scientific evidence in the years since Bruce died makes it a prime suspect. Just as in 1973, the conclusion is that Bruce Lee's death was a tragic accident, his fate was sealed the moment he chose to take a single equagesic tablet. For Chan, this marks the end of the investigation. But there's one more person he needs to talk to, Bruce's brother, Robert Lee. I return to what happened uh, on that, uh, on the night of uh, 20th of July, 1973. The only thing out of the ordinary was that he took that, that uh, one single tablet of equagesic, okay? And contains aspirin, but aspirin isn't the only thing in that drug. There's another chemical called mebobamin. Now, in recent years, medical findings have discovered that this particular element could have a fatal effect on some patients, although it wasn't known at the time. The conclusion that I reached, therefore, is that your brother seemed to have reacted to mebobamin. And, and this, this, this was the only thing that killed him. So it was a very tragic accident. But I can tell you one thing. Uh, there was no pain. He passed away peacefully. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Bruce Lee's death has always been surrounded by mystery and subject to wild conspiracy theories. Now this investigation has forensically searched through the evidence and arrived at a new conclusion. After almost five decades of hurt, Robert Lee finally has an answer for how his brother, the greatest martial arts movie star of all time, really died.